I am almost two minutes late. I apologize. I was reading a story about Bishop John Hooper. He was a martyr for Christ and time went past. It went too quick as I was reading about his story, his life. You know, this life here is so short. We have to make up our minds that we're going to follow the Lord. That we truly are going to make Jesus Lord of our life. It can't be just some words that we lightly speak. That you say, "Oh yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow," but yet, any new thing that comes sidetracks you. We've got to live our life in a way of knowing, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that Jesus is who He said He was, the Son of God, the one that came and died and suffered so that we might have life and have life more abundantly. He proved that when he rose again from the dead. And 500 people at one time saw him. That was not a hallucination. That is a fact. 500 people saw him at once. We have the testimonies of the disciples for 40 days. He continued with the people. And then he rose be by the right hand of God the Father where he stands in intercession for you and for me when the devil the accuser comes when you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior Jesus says yes but me and it's Christ's righteousness that God the Father sees it is nothing that we've earned nothing that we can do to earn it the price was paid by Jesus because of the love that God the Father has for us the creator of the universe the one who holds everything in its proper order you know telescopes can't reach far enough microscopes down small enough everything has such order such design there is truly a creator and that creator dearly loves you and says you were created in his image. You're not here by mistake. You've been chosen by God who dearly, dearly loves you. And one way to keep that assurance is by getting into his word. And that is why we have Matt and Randy in the mornings so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. I'm going to continue where I left off yesterday. I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 1. Yesterday my title was, Do You Have the Right Map? The End of the Road. And it was, Do You Have the Right Map? End of the Road. Only two exits. Do you have the right map? Which will you choose? More are coming behind you, so you have to make your choice now. For 1 Corinthians 1. So let me pray real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask that you're anointing be upon your word, O oh Lord. Give us ears to hear, hearts willing to receive what you want to teach us this morning. Holy Spirit, have your way. Teach us and guide us. Instruct us in the ways of righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Corinthians 1, starting in verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. The simplicity of the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God came into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might have life. For Jews request a sign, and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified 
to the Jews a stumbling block, and to the Greeks foolishness, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than man. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. For God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, that it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. There is nothing we can glory in other than Jesus Christ, because it's because of his righteousness, not our own, that we can stand before a holy God. For 2 Timothy 2.11 says, This is a faithful saying, For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remember them of these. Th remember them of these things. In other words, he, Paul was, or Paul was telling Timothy, remind the people of these things charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness, and their message will spread like cancer. Hymenius and Philetus are of this sort, who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are His, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. I'm pretty much out of time. I'm going to skip down to this. Do you have the right map? Are you on the right road? One leads to destruction and the other leads to abundant life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So keep a praise song in your heart. Remember, the cross is what we wear, we watch, we draw. Not as what's going to keep us safe, but as a reminder that Christ has risen. It is now an empty cross. Nobody's on it. The tomb is an empty tomb. Christ has risen from the dead. And one day, he's coming back. He came on a donkey, and they said, Hosanna, Hosanna. He came as the one bringing peace, but he is coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords on a horse. Justice will be done. He is a holy God. Now is a day of salvation. Now is our chance to say, Lord, I commit my life to you I want to know beyond any shadow of a doubt that I'm ready. In that childlike faith, you hang on to God and say, Lord, lead me, guide me. I feel like I'm sinking, but I know that you will grab my hand and pull me up as you did Peter in the water. He won't let you down. Things may happen, things may come against you, but know that you will stand strong. In the end, you will win. And when that trumpet sound comes, 
we will go home to be with the Lord, to enjoy all the blessings, all the things that God has been preparing for those that love him because he loves us so much. So keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m.